The recommendation in the US 2023 Investment Climate Statements cautioned readers to the dangers to one's money and reputation that Uganda's widespread corruption poses. It's like a disaster is written all over it. Officials and economists in Uganda, meanwhile, advised investors to disregard a warning from the US government about the risks involved in doing business there and voiced optimism in the nation's economy. Who should we believe? In this video, we will answer, how is the economy of Uganda performing? What makes it one of the fastest growing economies in Africa? What are the challenges? And how does corruption affect business and poverty rates? Geography Uganda is situated in the center of sub-Saharan Africa, which is part of East Africa and has a unique location alongside the equator. The Democratic Republic of the Congo borders Uganda on the west, Rwanda on the southwest, South Sudan on the north, Kenya on the east, and the United Republic of Tanzania in the south. It has a strategic towering platform for regional trade and investment, thanks to its land link location. Sadly, it seems like Uganda didn't make head or tail of this. Uganda, known as the Pearl of Africa, benefits from a huge market of over 283 million consumers, thanks to its advantageous location in East Africa. Agriculture, infrastructure, buildings, logistics, technology, and energy are important industries there. One of the fastest growing economies in Africa. Uganda's GDP is expected to expand by more than 5% in 2023 and 2024 due to the advancement in the oil sector. This GDP growth rate exceeds that of its African peers. In the past 10 years, their economy has grown at an average annual rate of 6% thanks to political stability and economic reforms carried out by the government since 1987. Actually, Uganda is on the list of nations whose strong GDP growth performance is predicted to make Africa the second fastest growing continent in the world, behind Asia, according to the African Development Bank, AFDB. Seems like they aced the test. Significant natural resources are found there, such as rich soils, consistent rainfall, and considerable copper and cobalt mineral deposits. With more than 80% of the labor force employed, agriculture is the most significant economic sector. Coffee makes up the majority of export earnings. For the past four years, inflation has been kept under control and below 10% annually. The majority of economic operations are completely open to international investment and liberalized. Both the 100% foreign ownership of investments and the dividend reparation process remain unhindered. The government's decision to liberalize capital account transactions taking effect in July 1997, the foreign currency market has now been fully liberalized. As of right now, it's one of just five nations in Africa without any limitations on capital transfers. Uganda has a good standing with lenders and donors both inside Africa and the combining markets. Import and domestic product taxes are consistent with the government's objective to bolster the expansion of the manufacturing industry. Seems like a catch-as-catch -catch can approach. Overall, with the formal economy becoming more and more substantial, the climate for private sector investment has greatly improved. In addition to pure growth, the economy there is changing from being primarily dependent on agriculture in 1986 to being more dependent on construction, manufacturing, and regional trade distribution. If you like this video so far, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Economic resilience in Uganda. Sub-Saharan African nations like Uganda face severe internal and external economic growth limits in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The global recession, diminishing external financial support, rising interest rates, and huge public debt. It's like economies have been blown out of the water by the pandemic. Even nations far from significant events can be profoundly affected by them in a world where globalization has woven the world together intimately. Uganda has not been impervious to global shocks. Geopolitical events such as the Russia-Ukraine war caused volatility in the oil and commodity markets, and the COVID-19 pandemic affected trade. This puts its chances of attracting international investment and exports at risk. Alarm bells start to ring. One of its primary growth restraining factors is its susceptibility to both external and internal shocks. 
These world events have real consequences for ordinary Ugandans, not just macroeconomic environments. Uganda experiences the fallout from global upheavals and shifting economic strategies in the form of monetary policy changes and imported inflation. Challenges to doing business Uganda offers businesses and investors intriguing chances because of its expanding economy and advantageous position in East Africa, but it has its own share of difficulties and obstacles, just like any other nation, which can make conducting business there difficult. In fact, in terms of easing of doing business, it is placed 116th out of 190 economies by the World Bank's yearly evaluations. From 2008 to 2019, Uganda's Ease of Doing Business Index averaged 120.75, with a peak of 135 in 2014 and a record low of 106 in 2008. Some significant obstacles for business include First, red tape and bureaucracy. One of the main problems facing Ugandan enterprises is the frequent encounters with bureaucratic roadblocks. It can be difficult and time-consuming to navigate government regulations, obtain permissions and deal with administrative procedures. Are they falling from grace as a result of a bad business environment or what? Second, access to finance. Although there has been some improvements in recent years, Many businesses, especially small and medium-sized organizations SMEs, continue to face difficulties in obtaining credit that is reasonable. Growth might be hampered by high lending rates and collateral requirements. Third, infrastructure challenges. Poor infrastructure can be a problem, especially in rural regions. Operations and logistics can be negatively impacted by inadequate road networks, unstable electrical supplies, and restricted internet access. The good news is, there has been a huge increase in infrastructure investment in Uganda. Large-scale infrastructure projects are currently being funded in an effort to promote industrial and economic growth. The nation is counting on China to provide more than $10 billion in cash for the building of numerous projects such as new highways, railroads, and hydroelectric power plants. Hopefully, this will come up roses for Uganda. Fourth, legal framework. For foreign investors, comprehending and navigating the legal system there can be challenging. Resolution of disputes and contract enforcement can also be drawn out procedures. Fifth, currency fluctuations. The Ugandan shilling, UGX, the country's currency, is liable to change. Exchange rate concerns have the potential to negatively affect an international business's performance. Turns out currency fluctuations are a real can of worms. Corruption. With a score of 27, Uganda placed 142nd out of 180 nations on the Corruption Perceptions Index in 2020. Their score is lower than the global average of 43 and the African average of 32.1. This isn't only true for 2020, it consistently ranks among the most corrupt nations in Africa and has performed worse than the global average ever since at least 2010. In addition, Uganda is the second most corrupt nation in the world among the world's poorest nations, or so-called low-income countries, according to the World Justice Project, WJP. The only country ranked lower than Uganda is the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's like setting the cat among the pigeons. In Uganda, one-fifth of government spending is allocated to corruption, which primarily helps the wealthy and well-connected. Corruption is frequently not penalised in the country because of vague and ineffective legislation. Furthermore, enforcement agencies frequently profit from corruption where there are sufficient rules in place, which deter them from taking measures to combat it. Due to cultural considerations, Corruption is widespread throughout the country and frequently seen as socially acceptable. Law of the jungle. Because foreign help comes from an outside source and the government feels less answerable to the people, it encourages unscrupulous government spending. Poor service delivery is the outcome of corruption since funds are taken from vital organizations like hospitals and schools. It also prevents businesses from being ready to compete properly in markets which stunts economic progress. Furthermore, because corruption threatens the rule of law, it erodes public confidence in the administration. 
Even though corruption is still a problem there, and there are groups that work to fight it, as well as tactics that have worked to reduce corruption. How corruption aggravates poverty. Poor people have been demonstrated to be disproportionately affected by corruption. About 25% of Ugandans were estimated to be living below the $1.90 daily international poverty threshold as of 2020. The impoverished in Uganda are disproportionately affected by corruption, as demonstrated by the fact that people with the greatest levels of poverty are also the most likely to have to bribe in order to engage with the police, receive healthcare or receive school services. Poor people are impacted by corruption because it underfunds and limits their access to healthcare and education by diverting funding away from hospitals and schools. In addition, persons with lower incomes bear a greater financial burden when they have to pay bribes to local authorities or organisations in order to receive local services. The country that came to a bad end, right? It's worthy to mention that Ugandans are generally doing better now than they were 10 years ago. In actuality though, a great deal of Ugandans are in much worse shape now than they were then. Still, a large part of the country has extreme poverty rates. Also, Ugandans now experience inferior government, less personal freedom and less social capital, although enjoying far greater safety and security. Conclusion The Pearl of Africa Uganda presents chances in the face of difficulties. Research, legal compliance, local collaborations, skills, technology, sustainability and local knowledge are the key components of success. Those prepared to traverse Uganda's distinct terrain can take advantage of its vibrant market. The Ugandan government is dedicated to improving the business climate and tackling commercial difficulties. Even with the noteworthy effects, more needs to be done. They should break the back of the beast. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to receive more content. See you in the next video.